Hello, I'm Mogli TV, and today we're going to look at something that I've seen popping up through Facebook and other places online, which is which MIDI controller should I get to use with Resolume? This is very much focused around your very first controller, so you're just starting off VJing. I'm going to give you some tips on how to pick your first MIDI controller. If you do a quick search in Google, you'll see the variety and range of MIDI controllers is vast. They started off being made specifically for music use, hence the keyboards. But over time, MIDI is a protocol that has been uh, adopted for other kinds of software, including VJing. So the musical analogy is not always ideal. There are mixer inspired trolls like the one we see here, where you've got a number of faders, one for each channel and a bunch of knobs and buttons that relate visually to each of the channels. That analogy, which comes from the audio world, is actually quite convenient for VJ and users. The paradigm is very similar. You've got a number of channels that you've got several controls that are specific to that channel. And then you can have a set of controls for your master. Another style of MIDI controller is the one that was originally intended for drum and sample triggering, which uh, basically has a grid of four by four pads, which are velocity sensitive. And then it's also got a range of faders and pods to control other parameters. You can also find combinations of controllers like this one we see right here, which has a traditional music keyboard and it's got the four by four grid of the sampling machines, so the NPCs and that kind of thing. You can also find grid-based controllers, which have been developed mainly to use with doors like Ableton, where you've got a big grid of clips with uh, LED feedback on them, like the famous uh, APC-40 and its multiple variants. And you've got the, what I would call all-in-one controllers, like the VJ specific, now discontinued Codanovas, like the VMX VJ, which combined a series of faders, uh, pods, trigger buttons, crossfader, basically everything that you might require. And last but not least, there's a whole range of what I would describe as wacky or other controllers that include things like motion sensing, sequencing, all kinds of stuff. The world out there is absolutely endless, especially if you step into the DIY maker arena and you can be using things like uh, Arduinos and microbits to make your own MIDI controllers. But I'm going to leave those out of the equation for now. So with all these MIDI controllers, which one should you choose? If you've been vegan for a while, you probably already know what you want from your MIDI controller, which parameters are important to you and your style of VJing, and what you're missing from your current setup. If you're just starting out, it's, uh, it's quite a hard task to pick one out. So my first tip when choosing a MIDI controller when you're starting out is to not choose one. I strongly suggest that you get to grips with your VJ software using the keyboard of your laptop or computer and the mouse until you start getting a, a grasp of what it is that you would like to control live. Uh, if you start VJing using the tools that come with your laptop, uh, you'll soon realize what it is that you're missing. So it's good to go through that process before settling into buying a MIDI controller. My second tip when getting your first MIDI controller is get a cheap one. This is so because it's very likely that whichever controller you get will not be the one that you decide to take further into your VJing career. My tip number three is to get a controller with ports and faders. A good idea for your first VJing controller is to have a range of knobs and faders. Buttons are useful too, but it's good to have the functionality that you don't already have built into your laptop. You've got the keyboard, which in Resolume comes pre-mapped to some of the more useful functionality. So it's easy to trigger clips and that kind of thing from your computer keyboard. Uh, what you don't have on your laptop is the ability to turn parameters through a range of values. And although you can use your mouse, uh, it takes grabbing the mouse, pointing it towards the control, moving it down. Uh, it limits what you can actually be doing all at once. 
Having a range of ports and faders gives you the ability to have some master controls, for example, as in you could have your master opacity assigned to a fader, which means that you could completely kill your visuals and bring them back on at the drop of a hat if necessary, which is very handy. The next tip would be to get a small one. I say not just a small one, but USB powered. When you're starting out, you're often going to be playing in very cramped places where there's hardly any space to set up your laptop, let alone anything else. So having a small controller is going to make this a lot easier. You'll be able to find a little gap somewhere where although it's not greatly comfortable, you can actually do what you want to do. If you come in with one of these big APC40 style controllers, um, more often than not, when you're starting up playing raves, small clubs, that kind of environment, you're just not going to find the space to lay this out in a way which is actually good. Another advantage of having a small controller is obviously there's less things to carry around with you and uh, they tend to be easier to pack without breaking anything as well. There's no need for a flight case. You can hopefully just chuck them in to a rucksack, maybe wrap a, a jumper around them for extra safety if you want, but it's basically not really a problem to carry them or fly with them. So after the four tips, I guess there'll still be people wanting to know which controller they should get as the first controller. So I'm actually going to give a few examples and give my final recommendation, which funnily enough contradicts some of my own rules. So if we go and do a search at Google and look for a MIDI controller with the fade, and you get this kind of thing from the Novation Launch Control Excel, which is probably on the bigger side and the pricier side, there's these kind of controllers, uh, which are basically just got uh, like normally eight faders and some associated buttons, maybe a knob for each one or this kind of thing. Uh, this several brands that make very similar controllers in that area some are pricier than others hopefully that implies that their construction quality is better although it's not always a guarantee but you can look at reviews online and see now the reasons why i suggest these controllers as best first midi controllers for uh, using in resolute because i consider them to have a big enough range of physical controls on for them to be quite good fun and very versatile to use without being overwhelming having a controller which is limited it actually makes you consider how you are using this my advice would be to not get the controller and on day one set off to map every single knob and every single button on the controller. I would discourage you against doing that straight off the cuff because I can guarantee you that whatever you map, you're going to want to change straight away. My next video will be about how the MIDI fighter twist makes a really good first controller. Now I know the irony, it breaks one of my tips, which is to get a cheap one, but if budget is no problem and you're committed to this VJing thing, you couldn't go wrong with it, but more about that on our next video. Remember to like and subscribe for more WrestleMoon content and thanks for watching.